Hello everyone and welcome to the July Sew Along. Can you believe we are already halfway through this year? For this month's Sew Along we have created this stunning floral burst quilt. The design comes in five different sizes, 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, 7x7 and the 8x8. There is one block included but so many different layouts that can be created from just this one block. Now lay your batting one in the centre of the hoop and stitch down. Using your applique scissors, trim away the excess batting from the outer edges. We will now begin the applique and flip and fold technique for the background. For this first piece of applique, stitch the placement line, then place fabric A right side up completely covering the placement line and stitch down. Then trim all of the edges of the piece of applique. Use the top stitching line from fabric A as a placement line for fabric B. Place fabric B wrong side up on top of the hoop with about a quarter of an inch crossing the placement line and the excess fabric pointing towards the bottom of the hoop. Stitch down. Fold over then stitch down again and trim away the excess fabric from the edges. We are now going to repeat the same flip and fold technique for all of the remaining background pieces. In the instructions where all of the fabric requirements are, there is a labelled diagram that indicates where each piece of fabric goes. Now you don't have to use both patterned and plain fabrics like we have, but in doing so it does give you that defined diamond look that we have in our quilt. When you get up to the last four outer pieces of fabric, you want to make sure you do not trim all of the edges of each piece. The only edges that you want to trim are the ones that don't extend over the batting stitch down lines. And we want to make sure we keep the edges that do extend over these lines untrimmed. These untrimmed edges will be hidden in the seams later on. Once all of the background pieces have been stitched into place, start embroidering the red work. For our red work, we chose to use this beautiful rainbow variegated thread. Then embroider the petal quilting in the opposite corner. The final stitching step of the block is to embroider the decorative satin stitch. Remove your block from the hoop and using a rotary cutter and ruler, trim back the edges to half an inch. Your first block is complete. Go ahead and make as many blocks as you require for your quilt. Lay your blocks out on your work surface and figure out a layout that you are happy with. Place the first two blocks in the first row right sides together and then pin and stitch a half inch seam to secure the two together. Continue attaching the remaining blocks together in that row. Move over to your ironing board and iron open the seams on the back. Now repeat this same process for the remaining rows of your quilt. Next, place the first two rows right sides together and again 
pin and stitch a half inch seam to secure the two together. Using your iron, press the seams on the back open. Repeat this same process to attach the remaining rows. If you are choosing to add borders to your quilt, then this is when we show you how to do so. Measure along one of the ends. Then cut two strips of fabric this length and then about three inches wide, but you can of course make these wider or thinner. And also cut two strips of batting the exact same length and width as the two strips of fabric. We now need to adhere the batting to the back of the fabric strip. We use spray adhesive for this step. Place your quilt wrong side up on top of one of the border strips. The right sides will be together. Match up one of the long raw edges of the border and quilt together and then use quilt clips or pins to secure in place. Using your sewing machine, stitch the quilt and border strip together using a half inch seam. Make sure that the seams between the blocks are open flat when you sew over them. To reduce any bulk, we like to remove the excess batting from the seams. Carefully do this with applique scissors and try not to cut through any fabric or stitching. Fold the border over and press flat with your iron. Top stitch your border for a neat finish. Make sure you are using a colour thread that matches your border fabric. Go ahead and repeat the exact same process to attach the second border to the opposite end of the quilt. Now that we have the two end borders attached, you may have excess fabric and batting from the borders that extend past the sides of the quilt. We like to trim these off to keep everything neat and tidy. We are now going to be adding the remaining two borders to the sides of the quilt. Measure one side of the quilt and include the width of the two end borders into this measurement. Cut two strips of fabric and two strips of batting this length and again the same width that, the, that you cut the end borders. Use the same pinning and stitching technique to attach these side borders to the quilt. Remember to trim the excess batting out of the seams before folding over and ironing the borders down. And also top stitch these two borders. With your rotary cutter and ruler, trim any excess fabric and batting from the side borders. To add a backing to your quilt, start by placing the quilt front right side up on top of the wrong side of the backing fabric. Use spray adhesive and safety pins to secure the two together. Move over to your sewing machine to begin the stitching in the ditch process. When stitching in the ditch, you do not need to sew every seam. We chose to stitch each of the border seams as well as the middle seam. Once the quilt front and backing fabric have been correctly joined together, go ahead and trim the backing fabric so it is the exact same size and shape as the quilt front. We will now be adding binding around the edges of the quilt to finish it off. 
To work out the fabric requirements for this step, please have a read through the provided instructions. If your fabric is not long enough, then we also show you how to join strips of fabric together, which is also what we are currently demonstrating in this video. Once you have your long strip of fabric that is needed for the binding, then fold the whole strip in half lengthways and wrong sides together. Then give the fold a good press with the iron. Open out one end of the binding strip and fold over that end on a 45 degree angle, then give it a good press with the iron. With scissors, trim about a quarter of an inch away from the fold, then fold that end of the strip in half again. You have now created a little pocket for the end of the binding to be hidden in later on. Working from the back of the quilt and starting on any side, match up the raw edge of the binding with the raw edge of the quilt. We will be starting at the end of the binding that has the little pocket fold in it. Using a ruler, measure one inch down from the end of the binding strip and then mark that one inch with a pin. Then measure three inches down from the one inch mark and mark again with another pin. And finally, measure two inches up from the first one inch mark and mark that two inches with a third pin. Move over to your sewing machine and using about a one centimeter seam, stitch one inch of the open fold onto the quilt and then stop stitching when you get to the one inch mark. Then start stitching again at the three inch mark and then stop when you get about one centimeter from the first corner. When you feel like you are one centimeter from the first corner, stop stitching but keep your needle down, rotate your quilt slightly and then continue stitching to the very point of the corner. Lift the binding over and pull it against the angled stitching. Then fold the binding strip back down, creating a fold and pin the fold in place. Start stitching again from the very edge of that folded corner and continue your way around the quilt using this same technique at every corner and stop stitching on the side that you started on at the two inch mark. Fold the remaining binding fabric at the 3 inch mark and trim along the fold created. This will leave you with just enough fabric to slip into the pocket that you created earlier. <laughs> 
Tuck the ends of the binding into the pocket and pin in place, then move over to the sewing machine and stitch the remainder of the binding to the quilt. Now that the binding is somewhat attached to the quilt, fold the binding over and give every edge a good press with the iron. Turn the quilt over so the front is now facing upwards. Starting at the corners, fold one edge of the corner over onto the front of the quilt and iron and pin in place. Then repeat for the second side and then this should leave you with a nice pointed mitered corner. Use this same technique for the remaining three corners and then continue pinning the binding to the sides of the quilt. Using your sewing machine, top stitch the binding to the quilt. When you reach the first corner, leave your needle down, rotate the quilt and then continue stitching. We suggest matching the top thread colour to the colour of the binding or you can use an invisible thread and then also match the bobbin thread colour to the backing fabric. Continue stitching your way around the quilt and there you have it, your beautiful quilt is now complete. Thank you for joining in on this month's sew along everyone, we can't wait to see all of your creative projects.